Welcome to Wonderland, the podcast where I go down the rabbit hole to research things you may be curious about. My name is Ami, and I'll be your guide on this trip to Wonderland. Hi guys, welcome to the spookiest time of year. I'm so excited to be here with you today to go down the rabbit hole to learn more about the origins of some of our favorite traditions during spooky season. So what super scary and oh-so-fun holiday at the end of October are we discussing today? Halloween. 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 Our topic is courtesy of Cheyenne from Columbia, South Carolina. Cheyenne wanted to know... Maybe more into why we celebrate Halloween, but like the history of Halloween. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. That's right. We're going to learn more about why we celebrate Halloween. What were its origins? Why do we dress up? Why the candy? I'm very excited to go on this journey with you today, but before we start down the rabbit hole, when you think of Halloween, what comes to mind? Spooky things. I love skeletons and pumpkins and black cats, things like that. Pumpkin. Not a jack o' lantern, but a pumpkin. Uh, trick or treating and candy. Spooky things and pumpkins. Ghost ghouls and pumpkins. Happiness. No, just <laughs> it is uh, my favorite holiday. Um, and I just like that. You know, it's kind of spooky. Um. People get to dress up and have a little bit more fun. It's a little bit uh, less stressful of a holiday than maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas. Because there's not quite as much to worry about with like family coming in, presents, like all that kind of stuff. So it's like a it's a personal holiday, not yeah. like a family holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Until you have kids. <laughs> yes, all of the spooky things. Witches, ghosts, and goblins. Dressing up and eating candy. Halloween is definitely a time for fun. But where exactly did Halloween originate? Um, I used to know this, but I don't know where it originated. Um, I, I want to say, and I could be completely wrong about this, but I think um, it's what do they call it? pagan holiday, or somebody used to celebrate it and like put on masks to cover up something and do rituals. I think I could be wrong. This might just be me making stuff up from movies I've seen. Um, but I know it's because people wanted to dress up for something. I've never thought about that. Yeah. Germany? I was like, are you going to hazard a guess? I, um, maybe Germany with um, the candy and trick-or-treating. And I don't know. Germany has a bunch of those weird representative <laughs> Halloween holidays. By dancing around a campfire to... Where off the ghosts in this one place that I can't remember. It's a Wiccan holiday, I believe, um, to celebrate the summer, the end of summer solstice, you know, end of summer and the beginning of fall, I think. But I'm sure it was a pagan holiday, and maybe it probably maybe could have uh, branched off from the Mexican holiday with the Day of the Dead and stuff. The origins of Halloween can be traced back 2,000 years ago to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, a New Year celebration which marked the end of summer and the harvest and the start of the cold, dark winters of Ireland, the United Kingdom, and northern France. While the summer and harvest were times of prosperity and abundance, these ancient people associated the bleak winter with human death. They believed that on the night before the New Year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred and that the ghost of the dead returned to Earth. The ghosts among them were not seen as benevolent and were blamed for causing trouble and damaging crops. But the Celts believed that their mere presence allowed for Celtic priests, called Druids, to predict the future for what to expect in the long, dark winter. On the night of Samhain, the Druids would build huge sacred bonfires. The people would then gather to burn crops and animals as sacrifices to the Celtic deities. They donned costumes of animal heads and skin and told fortunes. Before the celebration, the Celts would extinguish their hearth fires, and at the end of the night, they took fire from the sacred fire to relight their hearth fires, which they hoped would protect them from the coming winter. By the first century AD, the Roman Empire had conquered much of the Celtic territory, and while they ruled their lands, Samhain was combined with the Roman holiday Feralia, a day for commemorating the passing of the dead. 
Continuing with Roman influence, Pope Gregory III expanded All Martyrs Day, which was in the spring, to include all saints as well as martyrs, and moved the observance from May 13th to November 1st, a day commonly referred to as All Saints or All Hallows Day. By the year 1000, Christianity had spread to the Celtic lands and blended with old Celtic rites, and in an attempt to replace the Celtic Festival of the Dead with a related church-sanctioned holiday, the church introduced All Souls Day on November 2nd. The day before All Hallows Day, commonly referred to as All Hallows Eve, All Hallows Day and All Souls Day are collectively referred to as All Hallow Tide and is a time that Western Christians honor all saints and pray for the recently departed souls. So when do you think Halloween became a commercial holiday? 2021. In the mid-20th century, I don't... Yeah. Must have that. 2000. 2000. 19. <laughs> 2000. 2019. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, like, in the 80s. Um, Wait, no, not... Oh, 19... 97. That was back in the early 50s, I believe, 1950s. Oh, you just gave me an answer. You did dress up. And you were born in, like, 1950? Shut up. 1930. 1978. 1982. 19... 1976. In the 40s or 50s, I'm willing to bet. That's been a consistent guess. I wonder why. Why are you guessing 40s or 50s? That's, like, kind of when... America just, its commercialism really kicked in and, and stuff like that. That's what I always think of that decade with it. The answer to this lies in the evolution of Halloween in America. As Irish and Scottish people immigrated to the colonies, they brought their Halloween celebrations with them. While it was initially limited in colonial New England due to rigid Protestant belief systems, it was commonly celebrated in the southern colonies. The beliefs of the Europeans and the indigenous people of America began to meld and a distinctly American version of Halloween began to emerge. These celebrations of the harvest included sharing stories of the dead, telling each other's fortunes, dancing, and singing. Colonial Halloween festivities included ghost stories and mischief. By the late 1800s, some version of Halloween was celebrated nationally. By the 1920s and 30s, Halloween had become a secular but community-centered holiday. It is during this time that we see the early commercialization of Halloween. In the early 1900s, postcards and paper decorations began to be sold. In the 1930s, costumes became available to purchase in the store, and starting in the 1950s, Americans were buying candy to pass out to trick-or-treaters. And by the year 2019, Americans were spending $490 million each year on costumes for their pets. (laughs) So speaking of costumes, what is the first costume you remember wearing as a child? I was a Ghostbuster. Which one? Oh, Peter Venkman. Yeah, I had the. My mother made a full jumpsuit, and I had a proton blaster, proton blaster pack. Awesome. Are there any pictures? No. Oh, man. Pocahontas. Pocahontas. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to be Pocahontas. <laughs> Look at that. I was like a age child when Pocahontas <laughs> came out. So. Are you inflatable T Rex? No. Uh huh. That's what you wore last year. What's the first one you remember wearing? Batman. Actually, Superman. Or is that braided? You wore Superman, but you don't remember that one. You were not even a year old. You were not even a year old. I wore Superman. I saw it in a picture. You don't remember. I remember. I remember seeing the picture. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which one? I was Leonardo. Leonardo's my favorite. With the strap on nose, with the mask that just had a nose on it, and you would try to tie it on, and it would have a nose, and then you would have the bandana. Did you have the. Yeah, with the swords and the turtle shell, too. A Ninja Turtle costume. Which turtle? Michelangelo. I think Zack Sansor was also Ninja Turtle, but I think he was Leonardo. Well, we're halfway there. Oh, it was definitely a princess outfit. I had. Um, I was dressed up as a war in a pink dress. Oh, but the blue dress is better. You know that, right? I know, but I was a girl. I want a little girl. I want pink. <laughs> what will you or your child be dressed as this year? Undecided. Will your kids be dressing up? Yes, they will be dressing up this year. And what will they be? A couple anime characters. I think they're both from Demon Slayer. 
That is undecided, but I believe Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> so your dad, will your daughter be dressed up for Halloween this year? Yes. What would she be? Um, right now for her birthday, our, we're calling it her boo turns two because she was born October 22nd. So she's going to be a witch for that, but I'm trying to get my wife to do Thor, Love and Thunder, and she could be Mighty Thor, and she would be Love, and I would be Thor. That'll be fun. Yeah. Do I have a choice? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> we got that very expensive inflatable T-Rex costume so that you would wear it three years in a row. That was the deal. I didn't know I'd be uncomfortable and just... Hey, you want to know what it felt? You want to go dress up in it? No. And walk around just getting constantly hit in the head. You can't see anything below here. Nothing. <laughs> you could skip that one for me. Um, I'm trying to decide between... Either Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter or a Slytherin student from <laughs> Harry Potter. Why do you think costumes are such a big part of Halloween? So you don't know which neighbor's kids are coming up begging for food. Because you get to dress up and pretend you're somebody else. And that's kind of kind of what the holiday's about. <laughs> Being able to do that. So you can be an inflatable T-Rex? I think historically people would dress up as things to ward them off and maybe it morphed into the current marketing man I'm making money it's kind of fun to shed your regular clothes and just be someone else for a night we discussed how ancient celts would don animal heads and skins as costumes for Samhain and as Samhain merged with All Souls Day people dressed up as saints angels and devils in the 16th century Mumming and guising became popular, with people disguising themselves as AOC, or souls of the dead, to receive offerings on their behalf. Impersonating these beings was also thought to protect the impersonator from them. Even Shakespeare mentions this practice in The Two Gentlemen of Verona in 1593. And professor of theology and religion wrote, It was traditionally believed that souls of the departed wandered the earth until All Saints Day. And All Hallows' Eve provided one last chance for the dead to gain vengeance on their enemies before moving on to the next world. In order to avoid being recognized by any soul that might be seeking such vengeance, people would don masks or costumes to disguise themselves and their identities. Early costumes in America emphasized the gothic nature of Halloween and were aimed primarily at children and were designed to imitate supernatural or scary things, such as vampires, werewolves, zombies, ghosts, skeletons, witches, goblins. You get the idea. The costumes eventually evolved to include pop culture icons such as superheroes or princesses or Marshmallow or Post Malone. It has also been suggested that wearing costumes may have developed from the Christian custom of souling. Which brings us to our next question. Why do kids trick or treat? I have no idea. Tradition, even though I don't think anybody's going to actually play a trick. What I'm curious about is, like, why did it even start? Like, who's the first kid who went up to a door and was like, hey, give me something sweet or trick me. I don't care. Either. I don't know. I go to the sitcoms where somebody would do trick or treat, and if they didn't get a treat, then they would egg the house or something. Or they'd come back later and egg the house or smash the pumpkins. I guess they're literally asking, are you going to give me a trick or are you going to give me a treat? Do you think people used to give tricks? Like, what? I feel like some people might, like, just try to maybe scare, not like a too bad of a scare because I mean, you don't want to traumatize children <laughs> you imagine being the first child who's like i'm gonna go to this door and i'm gonna ask them for candy or, or they can trick me yeah <laughs> yep they're not thinking that they're just thinking oh i'm gonna get candy if i say this because they know the parents won't make them do a trick they just want candy um i think that is again starting in the whenever um halloween trick-or-treating became a thing and kids would go up to doors and they would either get a trick or a treat. Because I think you would either have to give them a treat or do a trick for them to satiate their, I don't know, fun. <laughs> like, I was talking to them earlier about it. Like, how do you suppose, like, the first kid's like, I'm going to go knock on this door and I'm going to say trick or treat. One or the other. <laughs> how did that start? I don't know. That's a good question. This tradition is likely traced back to the early All Souls Day parades in England. During the festivities, Poor citizens would beg for food, and families would give them pastries called soul cakes in return for their promise to pray for the family's dead relatives. This practice was encouraged by the church as a way to replace the ancient practice of leaving food and wine for roaming spirits. This new practice was called going a souling, and was eventually taken up by children who would visit nearby houses and be given ale, food, and money. Wait, 
Did I did I read that right? Yes. Yep. Ale, food, and money. Hmm. That's a far cry from Snickers and Kit Kats. So how did we get to candy in America? Well, as Halloween became the more secular and community-centered event that we know today, passing out candy to children dressed as tiny ghosts or goblins was an inexpensive way for whole communities to celebrate together, and trick-or-treating was revived between 1920 and 1950. Initially, Halloween was a time of pranks and vandalism, and the thought was that families could prevent tricks from being played on them by providing children with small treats. And so, trick-or-treating was born. While most children are just happy to get their hands on some of the $3 billion Americans spend annually on Halloween candy, there's still plenty of mischievous little devils who want to spend the carefree evening throwing eggs at a grouchy neighbor's house or tossing toilet paper in their trees. And in 1984, more than 800 fires were set across Detroit in a three-night arson spree, referred to as Devil's Night, and caused dawn to dusk curfews and enlisting the assistance of more than 30,000 volunteers to participate in neighborhood patrols. The trick part of trick-or-treating has a sordid past, but vandalism and trickery has had a huge decline in recent years, in part due to the rise of doorbell cameras. So, will you risk taking a trick, or will you be handing out candy this year to trick-or-treaters? I know I live in a cul-de-sac, and I don't think they come down there. Um, This will be my first at this house, so no, I will be trick-or-treating, I think. So far, no, it's not in the plans, but I don't know. You never (laughs) Yes. What kind of candy are you getting? Uh, whatever comes in the variety pack from Costco. No, I only have college kids living around me. No one comes here. Some people come here. I'll be handing out candy. Like two? Right. So you're going to hand out candy <laughs> to those two children? No. Yes. Really? Well, if he's not going trick-or-treating, then I'll be out there with you, I guess. Assuming we don't eat it all before Halloween, we'll be passing out candy at my house, even though we don't get many trick-or-treaters. I'll spend the evening sitting by the fire pit, enjoying a nice hard cider, and telling children how scary or strong or smart they look while handing out Skittles and Reese's Cups. No, those will definitely be gone before Halloween. While handing out Skittles and Sour Patch Kids. What about you? How do you like to spend Halloween? On the couch, in the dark, and making it look as though there's nobody there. (laughs) That's how you spend every day. How do you like to spend Halloween? Same. (laughs) As a single person, I like to go out and party. <laughs> Usually, I like to just cozy up with some popcorn and a good Halloween movie. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> do you like to go trick or treating? Do you like to dress up? Do you like to watch scary movies? Do you like to like? How do you like to spend it? None of those. Trading candy. Well, the last ten years has been taking the kid trick or treating. I don't know anymore. Watching horror movies. And this year, for the first time, got my wife to decorate for Halloween, and usually she only does it for Christmas, so it's been fun. No matter what you do or don't do, I hope that you have a memorable time. And you can treat some of your trick-or-treaters with some of the information you learned today. But I can't promise you that you won't wake up with a tree full of toilet paper in the morning if you do. Thank you for joining me on this trip down the rabbit hole. And until next time, be safe, be kind, and stay curious. Ready for this? Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, the lay of a fenny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and howlet's wing. For a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. If you think yourself a fan, like and share, subscribe, my man. This pod is made at GOT in the heart of SC, a product of Barrett G, but all the thoughts are those of me. Tweet us out and give a nod. Wonderland underscore pod. If you're old and on the book, then to our page, please take a look. Double, double, my likes, no trouble. Knowledge learned and info bubbles. Come back and listen to what's new and wonder, wonder with me too.
Oh, I almost forgot to say, there is an accompanying playlist to go with this episode. Um, I asked Facebook and people in person to give me ideas for a Halloween-y playlist, so be sure to check that out in the link, um, because I hope you'll enjoy it. Okay, bye.